Hi, I have a question about healing. When we say to sickness to leave the body, should we say it once and believe it's gone, even though in the physical realm there's no evidence showing it is gone, or should we continue telling the sickness to leave until it does? Now, that's a really good question, and to be honest with you, it's really hard to answer. Now, the reason I say that is because this comes down to what you're believing, and it's where you are. Now, here's what I, I generally do. Now, um, <clears throat> many times, if there is a certain situation going on, then I will uh, speak to that situation. I will command that sickness to go, command it to leave their body. And <clears throat> once I would give that command, it's like the uh, <clears throat> here in the States, and we have a, uh, a constable that <clears throat> when you get evicted out of a dwelling, <clears throat> then you have then the, the constable gets the written order from the judge or from the court and then he comes up to your door and he will knock on your door or ha and hand you that and serve you the papers so you have been served eviction papers that means you have the amount of time on the paper to leave the premises now if you're not gone by the time it says on the paper then they will come back and forcibly remove you right now <clears throat> so Along the same lines, that's kind of what we do. Now, what we do is we issue the order based on, or we deliver, we serve the order that is based on the Word of God. And so we get the order from the Word of God. We tell the thing to go, and we tell it when to go. We tell it what to do. Now, many times, and you will see this uh, even with, with Jesus' ministry, many times <clears throat> whenever he would command a demon to come out of a person, for instance, uh, the thing would then immediately, they said, it, in one case particularly, it says uh, the, it tore, the spirit tore the boy. And think about that, it tore him. In other words, it was like ripping apart from him. And apparently he had had this for a while, uh, as we can tell. But it was like ripping, that it had been assimilated as part of him. And so it tore him. And it even says that the boy fell down as one dead in so much that the people said he's dead or thought he was dead. Now, so there, Jesus told it to go. Why didn't it just go? Well, it did, but before it left, it tore him. Uh, and this is kind of like a person that is getting evicted that just before they leave out of the house, they tear stuff up. Why? Because they're mad they're having to leave, and so they have to go. Now, they know they have to go. You've given the decree. If you've said it in faith, in faith in God and his word, that thing knows it has to go. It's just that simple. Now, it will act as though it doesn't. It will take its time. It'll walk slow, so to speak, getting out. And what it's doing is trying to get, give, it's, no, let, me, let me be specific. Most Christians don't know how to stand. So they will say something and then they look for it. And then if they don't see the immediate change, then they assume it didn't work. So then they'll try something else and they'll try to do something else or maybe it, and, and that's the question I usually get is, did I not do it right did I not do it enough what was it no uh, whatever you say whatever you told this thing to do stand tell it to go and don't back off because the minute you go hmm, maybe I didn't do it enough maybe I didn't do it right maybe I need to say it like this you have just wavered and it won't work the enemy at that point because you're wavering the enemy can stop he can stay where he's at so you have to realize that he's slowing down long enough to give you time to question and, you know, second guess yourself, right? But give you time to question whether or not what you're doing is working. Because the enemy knows in dealing with most Christians, most Christians, if it doesn't happen instantly, they'll back off and say, well, it must not have been God's will. Well, it must not have been God's timing. Well, I must not have had enough faith. I'm a, no. The thing, it, it, it takes, a, you know, sometimes a little bit of time, but the thing has to go. As long as you don't change what you've said, as long as you don't negate what you've said by negating the command by saying, well, I guess it didn't work. Well, I guess it's not God. When you start saying that, you've wavered, everything stops, and the enemy stops leaving. He could have one foot out the door, and he will stop right there. So, um, now... So, but the question is, you know, should we say it once and believe it's gone? Okay, well, it's, uh, let's go back to Mark 11, 22 and 23. And what he said there, he said, have faith in God, right? Have faith in God. In other words, you give the command, you do the word, 
God does the work. So you give the command. You have faith in God's word, and you're going to give the command, right, that whatever you say, that if you believe in your heart, say it with your mouth, right, that if whatever you say, you believe that it shall come to pass. Then after that, it says that when you pray, believe that you receive it, and you shall have it. Now, notice there is often a distance or a time lag between uh, believing it and having it, right? So you have to believe that you receive it right then. And the best way, the best example that I can give, really, it would be like you go online. You, you have, especially now with everybody ordering things online, you can go online, you find what you want, and then you order it and you pay for it. Now, once you pay for it, they send you a confirmation, usually, and that confirmation says, okay, your payment has gone through, and this thing is on its way. Now, in many cases, you can track it. Other cases, you can't. But the thing is, at that point, you know, maybe you print out your confirmation, and you go, oh, look, man, guess what I just got? I just, I just got a, a, you know, set of clothes, or just got a, you know, a 48-pack of toilet paper order. That's out of it. Was, but whatever you order, you just ordered it. But now notice, see, this would be saying you've ordered it. You have it. You, you paid for it, right? You believe that you receive it. In other words, it's as good as yours right then, and it's on its way. And now you are anticipating, and you even go to the front door and look out and wait. And, you know, you're waiting. Why? Because you're expecting. You're anticipating it to, to arrive. And so you, you receive it. You pay for it. You have it. It's yours. You got the paper. If it doesn't show up, somebody's in trouble because it's yours. And then you shall have it. So then it comes after you pay for it, after you've ordered it. And it's the same thing. Now, Jesus has already paid for it. But now you have to, as we say, uh, it's kind of like used to. I remember with, with uh, Sears, you would go online, pay for it or whatever. And then you would, they would say, do you want us to deliver it or do you want to come pick it up? And if you want to come pick it up, you say, well, you go to Will Call, and it's waiting there for you in Will Call. So you would go to the Sears, and you would go there, <clears throat> and you would print out your paper and show it to them and say, here's my name, here's my order. Oh, yeah, here it is right here. And so in many cases, it's like that to where with us, we're going to Will Call. So we've already, the, the thing's been paid for by the blood of Jesus, by the sacrifice of Jesus. Then we have our confirmation. See, our confirmation for healing uh, is uh, Isaiah 53. Uh, 4 and 5 and 11 and 12, you can see that. And then you can go to uh, Matthew 8, 16, and then you can go to 1 Peter 2, 24. See, these are your confirmation numbers and your tracking numbers, all right? So you have that, and then when you, you take that and you go up and you say, okay, I want this, and now, now you're, you're uh, confirming it, and you're saying now, okay, this is this healing for this person. The uh, Bible says they were healed, so in the name of Jesus this thing has to go now, and now you are exerting. You're saying, and here's my confirmation. Here, right here, is proof that this has to go. So this is proof, not the lack of the situation, not the lack of symptoms, not the effect on the body. This is proof, okay? <clears throat> Matter of fact, you know, I'm putting together a teaching. Actually, it's going to be a seminar uh, on faith. <clears throat> it's going to be a, probably a full three-day type seminar on faith, and... I want it to be um, conclusive. I mean, it's going to be conclusive. It's going to be, um, you know, they, they, like they would say, uh, Strong's uh, exhaustive concordance. Well, we, this, this is going to be a exhaustive, ho hopefully exhaustive, not exhausting. Okay, there's a difference there. But this uh, is going to be a, a seminar on faith that's going to cover every aspect of faith and it's going to uh, readjust some things and show people what the Bible says about faith. So, uh, we're putting that together even right now. But here's what it says uh, in Hebrews uh, chapter 11. Of course, everybody, most of you know these. Uh, Hebrews 1, even through uh, verse 6. In Hebrews 11, 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So your faith is the substance. Your faith is the evidence. You understand? So when you exert faith, the substance of faith is the fact that you believe and you have acted and now that substance is applying to that situation and whenever you have a question about it the evidence your faith is the evidence not the healed body not the change in the body and now people say well well you know that just didn't make sense because i mean if i'm healed shouldn't i shouldn't i see that well i got news for you you're not going to get healed see that's the problem 
People think God's going to heal them when they're sick. God's not going to heal you when you're sick. See, what it is is that in Isaiah 53, <clears throat> it says, by his stripes we are healed. Present tense. Then you go to 1 Peter 2, 24, and it says, by whose stripes you were healed. Right? So the were healed means it's already done. Well, when was it done? On the whipping post, right? <clears throat> That's when your healing was purchased. So it's already been paid for. So he's already healed you. How? By his stripes. Do you get that? By whose stripes we are healed. We were healed, for, uh, First Peter 2, 24 says. So by his stripes we were healed. So we were already healed. It's already done. It's already uh, established. He has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings, every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. He's already given us everything that pertains to life and godliness, and healing pertains to life and godliness. So all these things, it's already done. Now, it's up to you. Now, you can, that, can, that promise, which the Bible says all the promises are in him, yes, and in him, amen, so be it. So that promise can sit there in that Bible. You can have your Bible right there on the table next to you uh, all day long, right there on your desk. It could be right there, and that promise will sit there, and it will sit there dormant. And, and basically ineffective until you decide to choose to believe it. So your faith in God, in his word, is actually what causes it to come to pass in. So, because if, if it wasn't that, you would just already been healed and stayed healed and there you go. But that's not the way it is. It, the promise is here. You have to believe the promise. And when you do, now your faith is what activates that promise in your life. So... And it's by grace that, that we're healed, that we're delivered, all that stuff. It was the grace of God that allowed Jesus to bear the stripes for our sickness. So he applied the grace, and because of the grace, now we get to apply the faith in God, in his word, in the finished work of Jesus. And we say, you know what? He says we were, and if we were, if we were, I am. Isn't that simple? And then when you say, I am, and by his stripes, I am healed, and so that means uh, sickness, disease, uh, you've got to leave this body, right? And so you have to remember, we're calling those things which be not as though they were. Now, again, people say, well, that just doesn't make any sense. Well, of course not. Sense is carnal. See, sense, meaning sense operated, sense ruled, uh, <clears throat> dictated to by your flesh, by your senses, is carnal. See, faith is not carnal. Faith is spiritual. Spiritual looks at the spirit. See, spirit looks at the things which are not seen. And as long as it looks at the things that are not seen, then the things that are not seen will become the seen. And when they become the seen, then the seen becomes the unseen. Now, I know that totally sounds confusing to you, maybe. But what all I'm saying is that right now you're seeing the scene. All right? You can see the scene. You can see the problem in the body. But you take the scripture and you look at the unseen. What is the, if you're, sick in your body, if you're experiencing sickness in your body, <clears throat> what are you seeing? You're seeing the symptoms. You're seeing the aches. You're seeing the pains. You're seeing the whatever, the fever, whatever it is. You're seeing that, right? But we don't look at the seen. The Bible says we look at the unseen. And if we look at the unseen, which is what? What's unseen when you're sick? Health, healing, wholeness. That's the unseen. So when we look in this perfect law of liberty and we look into this, <clears throat> then we look at it, and it describes to us what we're not seeing. It describes healing. It describes health. It describes God's will concerning our health. So we're looking at the unseen, and as we look at the unseen, it becomes a seen. And the good thing is, when your faith is applied to this word, then the unseen is activated in you to the place where now the seen will change. Okay, <clears throat> We read the other day. That as long as we look at the unseen, uh, it works a far greater weight of glory in us because <clears throat> the seen is temporal or temporary, changeable, whereas the unseen is eternal. See, this unseen, this is the only thing that's eternal, is this Word of God. So the unseen is the Word of God, and the, and the unseen is eternal. So it'll always be there. So when you're looking at that, then, and you look at that, then your body will begin to change to meet that because the unseen health and healing becomes the seen because the seen is temporary and the temporary changes to match the unseen or the eternal. Now, hopefully you, you 
sort all that out. I hope I said it clear enough. <clears throat> so, 